just about well not about but just three days ago you know when you are totally engaged in the journey the mind reveals I will talk about what happened okay someone has so okay where is the problem anyhow that too is also okay so <laughs> And uh, for the last three days, I'm talking and uh, talking about that knowledge, how it is revealed. So that helps every seeker coming directly to the topic. Pay attention. I'm asking a single, simple question. And if you contemplate and reflect on this, this mind is always going to remain calm and peaceful. Oh, it's such an instant solution? Yes. So question is, does anyone sense you SMS or email or a snail mail to think to speak or act what that you think bad about me whenever I meet you you become angry over me whenever I talk to you you react to me does anyone sends you the SMS email did you understand the question no one sends then why we become angry, upset, stressed? Does the world outside say to you that now this situation is? So now it's a time for you to suffer. Does anyone say to you? Does the world say to you? Or is it our mind? does it all and if yes do we want to do it no then why it happens that is how the process of contemplation and reflection should be in our life until ignorance is totally removed Again, I'm repeating the question. Think of it. Ask these questions. The moment you are upset with someone, oh, does that guy send an SMS to me that I should be upset? I should react. I should be angry. I should fight. Then it makes a sense. They have sent you the message that, you know, whenever we meet, you just become angry. And if not, then why? So because of the impressions are stored about that person or event in my mind. That's a logical answer. But then why? Why it is stored? Do I want to store them? Yes, I attract them. I attract them means my mind attracts. Why the mind attracts? Because of ignorance. Because of the false notion. The other person is separate from me. The situation is totally diff separate from me. And still, I get upset. I start suffering. Think. If you do not contemplate, then nothing is going to happen. So the impressions are of two types, good and bad. 
So good impressions in the mind leads to merit in life, favorable situation and bad, bad impressions causes the demerit. It creates an unfavorable situation by my mind for me. And if I don't want to learn, uh, then it's okay, then, <laughs> then <laughs> both are present. Both these impressions are present in an inactive form. And when these impressions are present in an active, inactive form, trigger comes from the outer environment. It creates the world in which we live. The world of suffering, of pleasure, of attachment and of detachment. Are you getting it? Say yes, even if you don't get it. Does anyone sense you the SMS or mail? I'm focusing on that question. Does anyone sense you the message, email or, huh? or a letter that please, when I meet you, please react, please be angry, please fight with me. So it is happening my mind is cooking a story inside and I allow it. So when I allow it, I am already in stress. Balloon is full. It may blast. This is the nature of contemplation and reflection. So without recognizing Without recognizing these two movements in the mind, how to recognize them? By discernment and dispassion. By discernment and dispassion, when you ask this question to yourself, oh, no one sends me the email, no one sends me the SMS to be angry over them or in a situation. Even the world does not, world outside does not send me any intimation. So I, I cooked my own story. So that cooking my own story results into a statement that comes from my mind that I am worthy of suffering. But otherwise, where is the suffering? Did you get it? Where is the suffering? There is no suffering. I carry the burden of that suffering that is false. What is false? Do you still remember false means? What appears true? What appears? What is experienced as true, but it is not true? We keep holding these thoughts and the feeling and the images about ourselves, about others all the time, and that creates a ripple and it causes the suffering. We keep holding principles of discernment and dispassion, knowledge in the mind reveals until the journey is complete. We don't have that ability to delete, not to get carried away. So why we are not to get carried away means mind is heavily conditioned. If I do not understand this mind is heavily conditioned and I have to decondition the mind by knowledge, not by practice. The practice does not work if the knowledge is not supporting me. And I have already told you three steps I do not know. Let me know it. I do not understand, let me understand it. I do not experience, let me continue to contemplate and reflect and answer the question. Again, I'm picking up the same question. Does anyone, any person, any living being, 
or any non-living being word situation condition outside tells me that this is the time to react and this is the time to fight this is the time that falseness I have to recognize living in my mind. Do you still remember the question? Does anyone send you the message or email that when I meet you, you have to be angry over me, you have to react to me, you have to abuse me? It is happening in my mind. Nobody told me. So what is the solution? I have to take care of the mind. Now let me leave it, you know, let me take a sleeping pill. I know I'm still thinking about that guy, you know, I am full of reaction. Who is responsible? Did anyone say you to, to do so? When you, we contemplate and think in this way, this mind, but to contemplate and think, so one master Oh, was a wonderful master, Ramakrishna Paramhans. And before that, even it is written a couple of thousands of years ago, then what is the way, the what is the path? So you see that they, they use the parables and the metaphor. So now coming to that metaphor. So master says that either you can follow, Follow the journey of a baby cat or a baby monkey. What the baby cat? Baby, you know, the cat mother holds the baby cat in her mouth to move from one place to the other. That is also a journey I'm not talking about. Here the journey is about the monkey baby. Monkey baby is holding the mother tightly. Are you able to hold that knowledge tightly with you all the time? You will get the answer of this question. It's a, it's a beautiful way to present this master presence. That monkey baby keeps holding the monkey mother, seeker has to follow the path. Who is a true seeker? I hold on to the knowledge so that my mind does not create any level of ignorance and the falseness. And when that happens, then see, whether the mind is wandering, it is not wandering at all. Do you see that? Just check it this week. The mind will not at all wander. It is not distracted. You need not to do anything to the mind. Except that I, sh I am holding on to that knowledge. I am holding on to this wisdom. Does anyone? Again, I am repeating the question. Does anyone? Sends you the SMS or email. We receive a lot of emails and SMSs. But did you receive any email and SMS like that? You know, whenever you meet me, you have to react to me. You have to be angry over me. And I'm ready to receive your anger and reaction. No one. Why no one? Because everyone loves peace and happiness, except me. So that is considered, with that understanding, it is considered this is the false. There are three layers of the reality. One is the truth, the real, unreal, and the false. The false that appears true, but it is not true. So when the mind recognizes what is true, what appears true but it is not true, 80% of the challenge is drops. How? By discernment and discretion. In that state, the Master says the real self is the pure consciousness 
It is not the part, product and property of anything in the world. It is independent. Still, we are dependent on the likes and dislikes, desires and action causes these thoughts to pop up in my mind. I'm not answering that question. You might be aware that I will take up later that why my mind feels that I have received the messages from others to be angry whenever, uh, whenever or hesitated, or react, or fight, or divorce, etc., etc. All the problems, all the problems live in that mind. No one sends me that, any messes, but still I do it. So obviously I, my mind depends on the outer world. Why it depends? Because of likes and dislikes. Why there is a likes and dislikes? Because of I am projecting peace and happiness outside. And then there is a constant ripples of desires in my mind that keeps my mind occupied. And then I say my mind is distracted. <clears throat> Another point here to understand the world outside or an individual do not tell me. No one is going to tell us that whether it is real or a false, I have to make a judgment. The path of a baby monkey. I have to hold on to the truth. <clears throat> I have to hold on to the wisdom. If I don't do it, nothing is going to happen. We may be doing the practice for years together, but these practices will not have any result. We have to follow the path of a baby monkey. Anything that I like does not tell me it causes happiness. I project that happiness. Think. Check. Tell me if I'm wrong. Any dislike do not tell me but it causes sorrow. So let me like something, let me dislike something, it's okay, it's a part of the life. But minus happiness and sorrow. Are you getting me? That is the high level of discernment. And that can only be achieved by knowledge, by understanding. It cannot be achieved by, by, by practice. Practice will not help you. How the practice will help you? You just do the practice, do all the breathing and the mantra and ultimately your mind goes deeper into a kind of relaxation. Once you return from the meditation, active meditation, the mind will again start thinking in the same way. That is what happens. Now what happens? The magic happens once the mind lives into that discernment in this fashion, then we, the mind recognizes and realizes the falsehood of the world outside. And the moment the mind recognizes the falsehood of the world outside, your mind is empty. And when the mind is empty, that is what the Buddha says, emptiness. False means that craziness of the mind and the world is not seen will lead us to the highest state of meditation. But never believe that the world will not be seen, the people will not be seen. Normally our mind reacts, I don't want to see his face. So what will happen if you don't see his or her face? 
others will be more relaxed. We create another kind of a conflict in our mind. So again I am repeating another level of conclusion that never think that meditation or mindfulness means the world outside is not seen. It will not continue to act the way it has been acting until now. If you say the world should not be seen, that is the reason of emptiness. Uh, then sleep is a better option. Keep on sleeping, you are already in meditation. Whenever the world is seen, then take a sleeping pill. Go into coma. Today we are removing that wrong notion, the delusion surrounded by uh, surrounded by these things in the journey of mindfulness and meditation. You are not changing the world outside. Perception of the world has changed completely. Perception means knowledge, means awareness. I live into that awareness from a moment to moment. And in that moment from moment, there is no reaction. There is no anger. There is no hesitation. There the false is not there. But if we believe, if we believe, if our mind conditions that I should go into that emptiness where the world is not seen, if that is meditation, so better keep sleeping. The moment you wake up, I'll give you the pill and sleep. Because the world is not seen in the sleep. So what is the difference? What is the conclusion? The world is still seen. All the people, places, events, situation remains the same, but here the mind has undergone a transformation. Mind lays into the highest awareness. Highest awareness represents that state of emptiness and nothing else. And that reveals the real self. How simple, wave appears, but it is not. The world appears, but it is not for me. I'm happy. The pot appears true, but it is not. Oh, pot is nothing but the clay. The wave is nothing but the water. Body appears true, but it is not. Mind appears true, but it is the bunch of the thoughts. Highway does not change. Going and coming car keeps on changing. And the mind remains empty. With that discernment and dispassion, this is possible. And it removes my ignorance. The moment I it removes the ignorance, the real self reveals itself. And we live into that. Until then, Directly or indirectly, we keep on thinking, I carry the burden of the world and the suffering. All the time, in all locations, in all places, in all relationships. And the mind makes me crazy. Why we carry the burden? Because of ignorance. We discussed that on Saturday's journey, we have to complete and summarize the first 18 verses then we can go deeper. So it is the 13th verse the Master explains. So, and I try to put it in a way so that it becomes easy to understand. So I should keep an awareness what appears true, but it is not true, the false. That false is known as the mithya. So this week, just maintain your awareness that let me see how my mind perceives the world and the people and the places and the situation. 
you just be very clear about it, discern it, and you will see the mind is always empty. So that mitya in the false means, what it means? First understanding is that false is constantly changing. No one is the same as we were last week. A man approached uh, Buddha when he was giving a discourse and he uh, spat on the face of the Buddha. Just see that, how, how, how my mind discerns. And uh, the next day he returned and he touched his feet and asked the forgiveness. So Buddha said, to whom I should give the forgiveness? Whom should I forgive? The one who is seeking the forgiveness? So that guy has already changed completely. Can I recognize the world of change? The world is in flux all the time. So that no particular thought of likes and dislikes stays in the mind will cause the ignorance. The first thing. Second understanding of this false is that we cannot say that it exists and we also cannot say that it does not exist. I experience the body. Body exists. But when I look closely and discern where is the body, like the pot, clay pot, when I see the clay pot keenly, I find there is no clay pot, only the clay exists. Only the water exists, wave does not exist. So if you consider that we all are the waves, only real self exists. Only one, there is only one existence. So you see that how we understand the false, again, the path of the monkey, baby monkey. And I keep holding on this knowledge all the time. Third meaning, it does not have an independent existence. Whatever is false, it is not independent. Body is not independent, mind is not independent. So whatever is not independent, it is not the real stuff. Body, breath, mind, intellect, thoughts. I think crazy of you, I think good of you because of, because it is dependent. Fourth thing is extremely important. The fourth understanding or the definition of the false <coughs> When we start analyzing the falls, you start analyzing. Pick up the same question. Where is that question? Does anyone send me the mail and the SMS that, okay, the moment I meet you, you start fighting with me, being angry, hesitate, and abuse me. Why I, why I put that question? The fourth definition applies there. The false means for definition, when I start analyzing mind, why you want to react? Why you are thinking bad about someone? Why you are angry? You start analyzing what is happening in the mind, what will happen? It is not seen. It dissolves. But when my mind keeps focused on the other part, other, the world outside, the people outside and place, then the worst thing happens in my life. My getting is the fourth. Fourth means that is seen, that is experienced. But I, when I analyze, it is not seen. There is nobody. Here is my head, here is my eye, cheeks, and, but body is, as such, body does not exist. The different parts of the body exist.
So, what is the struggle in the mind? Experience in the knowledge. Experience says me something, knowledge is somewhere. Or you can say experience, feelings, sensations, perception, inputs from the senses is one thing, but awareness is totally different. Whether you say it's or not. So when you closely, keenly analyze the word outside, the body and the breath, nothing exists because it is constantly changing. It is not seen. Then I don't see you as body. I don't, I recognize you, you are David, you are Jerry, you are Stephen, you are Terry, but at the same time, the inner awareness expands beyond the body, beyond the name, beyond the form. In that state of the mind, the real self reveals itself. That is why we say it is non-practice. The part of a baby monkey. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed does not mean, I told you a couple of times, you are keeping that idea in your mind, that knowledge or that awareness. Eyes are closed, the position of the body and position of the body and Then we went into being comfortable. I, have, I never said you that you become comfortable. I only said be comfortable. Be comfortable. It demands the knowledge and understanding, my friend. What is that understanding? That understanding, so simple. Do, where is that? You look. So again, when I say you look, it simply means you are aware. Aware of what? Aware of the neck joint. The neck, neck joint has a name and the shape. Now you keenly observe, analyze. So yes, it's a part of the body. And even if you take the neck joint as a whole, it still consists of millions of cells. Oh, so neck joint, does it exist? Like the clay pot? Today just we are an observer, a very keen observer. And see what happens. Oh, it's constantly changing. It's made up of the millions of parts. But now you see that. Now, when you are keenly observing, you also experience sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Okay? So, there are two things. One is the experience and other is the awareness. Awareness means knowledge. Uh, so the mind says, okay, you feel sensation, comfort, and steadiness in, around or in the neck joint. Oh, is it limited to only the neck joint? No. So my experience cheats me, yes. My experience that you are responsible for my stress and suffering, experience that you cheated me, experiences that the world created this situation. Is it true or false? When you keenly observe, become aware, you find it is not there. So no, when it is not there, because of awareness, that is emptiness. So what happens, the mind will continue to experience the emptiness when the room is empty, when there is no noise from outside. You see that? 
that mind is still projecting nothingness or emptiness with reference to the world outside and that is why the progress hurts. That emptiness is totally different. What Buddha says nothingness is totally different from what we understand. It becomes only one when we follow the path of the monkey, baby monkey. So look at it, look, look at the shoulder joints now. The shoulder joint is the name and the form consists of millions of the cells or bones, etc., etc. It's all cells or chemicals. You are keenly observing. You are not taking it. You are not taking it for granted. Oh, here is a shoulder joint. Not the surface living. So one, is, one thing becomes clear that the name and the form is non-existence, but it will continue to be, continue to be seen. Let it be seen. That results into an experience of sensation, comfort, and steadiness. It is not your practice. It is the knowledge. So what happens when you see it, it does not exist as such, then what happens? The mind drops its lights and dislikes, duality and a conflict instantly. And again, I just spoke about it, that emptiness, not this emptiness. You have already seen, you know, when you do meditation in our country, you know, they, they start uh, run beautiful music. Uh, music is a distraction for meditation. But we are heavily conditioned because music, the sound is coming from outside. We don't keenly observe it. So move the mind on the hip joint, be there again as an observer. Okay, hip joint, millions of these cells. The wave is nothing but the millions of droplets. So what are these droplets? Water. So when we keenly observe, we find that emptiness. Obviously, with the experience of sensation, comfort, and steadiness. How simple it is, how easy it is. The entire body, now go to the entire body. So it is not that you carry forward with an experience of sensation, comfort and steadiness. Sensation, comfort, and steadiness, but whether body is seen, is this confirmed? It will continue to be seen. It is also confirmed. Question is whether it exists or not. A keen observer, a real seeker finds the way the clay part does not exist, same way the body also does not exist, but it appears to exist. That awareness is required. Because mind lives into that extraordinary awareness, And there is a normal result of sensation and comfort and steadiness and relaxation, which is already present in the existence. We are not doing anything to, to bring it back. 
that results into if I again discern that is the real emptiness and nothingness. It has nothing to do with the world outside. What happens to that emptiness and nothingness? That nothingness and emptiness never changes. That is what the Buddha was saying. Did Buddha ever say that you close yourself into the room, uh, burn the incense sticks, find out that there is no noise coming from outside, there is no disturbances from the members of the family who are not doing meditation, so I build my ego, and everything is destroyed. So as long as my reference point of emptiness is the world outside, I'm not doing anything. It's just a fun. Did anyone say that in that pure consciousness there are many thoughts? There are many disturbances. There are ripples. Consciousness by itself is empty. Consciousness by itself is a nothingness. Why? It is not an objective reality. Oh. Yes. We are still taking support of something, but, but our main goal on Saturday's journey is knowledge, understanding, and a non-practice. When we make it simplified, we are making a reference of emptiness not with reference to the world outside. As long as the reference is there for the world outside, mind is bound to have those impressions already stored in the mind with the likes and dislikes, with an attachment and detachment, with desire and inclination and leaning. That is why I asked you the most important question. In the moment you ask this question, as a keen observer you find the emptiness not with reference to the world outside, but with reference to the consciousness. So how did we went about, how did we go about it for a couple of sessions before? Just see that, look at the body. I said, experience sensation, comfort and steadiness. Yes, I experience, but what about the knowledge? After that, there is a space. Then what did I say? They remember, space is awareness and awareness is space. Finished. But in today's session, we are a little deeper in a sense that we casually look what is seen, but we are keen observer. We go deeper whether actually it is seen 
I see the body. Is the body seen? Yes. For a mind, for a person who is attached. But I'm not attached. I'm a seeker. So I go deeper. Deeper means? Again, you know, we make a mistake. Deeper means as if we have to go inside the body. Pay attention. You're reflecting. And that reflection gives me an insight. Going deeper means that going into the insight. Oh, the body is made up of the parts. There is such the body is seen. But the body is not there. How come? You know it. Like, the waves are seen, but wave is not there. It is all water. Or do you mean to say that body is not there? It is all awareness? Answer is big yes. First there is an awareness, then only I know my head. First there is an awareness, then only I know my arms and the legs. Oh. A mind created an idea, a thought, here is the body. Look at it. Jay Krishnamurti used to say that when we live in an extraordinary awareness, that emptiness and nothingness is always there. That nothingness is not the property, part or the product of the material world outside. And some of you have been experiencing, that's why I I'm just opening up. Well, look at the breath. Pay attention. When I say look at the breath, it is not a practice. Looking means you are aware of the breath. <clears throat> so breath is the name and it has a form. Let us observe keenly. So the mind says the breath is going in, not in me, but in the body. The breath is coming out of the body. You're not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. The moment you change the rate and the rhythm of the breath means you have started doing something. And what is your experience of the breath? It goes in, you feel the sensation. The breath comes out, you feel the sensation. So sensation is an experience, awareness of the breath moving in and out. Who says the breath is moving in and out? The mind. Mind has created an idea. Why should I believe? Keep on observing. So do I mean to say the breath comes from nowhere and it enters into the body and breath leaves from the body from nowhere? No, no, it is outside. Also, the breath remains outside and it goes in and out. That keen observation is required. Observe it little deeply. <coughs> Breath.
breath is present inside and so-called outside. Like the wave, water in the ocean is already present and at one place that water appears as a wave. We're going deeper today. Oh, what do you mean? It means so simple that breath as in existence is present everywhere, all the time, manifest as an individual, you, me, she, he, it, they. which I say the breath is going in and which I say the breath is coming out. But it's not so simple. But that gives, supports that awareness of the breath with the knowledge. We support the breath, no focus on the breath, do nothing, no, that will not work. And that's why it's not working. You know, I'm using a metaphor to explain you. I believe you all can see the water in an ocean manifest as wave at one point and then dissolves. Again rises again falls. That water is nothing but the breath in the ocean of the existence. Every moment when this breath goes in the body makes the body matter alive. That is what we call the life. And every time the breath leaves the next moment, it is the falling of the wave. But because we have a false notion about the birth and the death, that is why we are always scared of the death and the birth. So simple. That is why the wave dances on the surface of an ocean. We always remain crazy and scared of the by giving a false definition of the birth and the death. The way the wave rises falls, rises again. That is our journey. Way to worry. You are aware and you are also aware that mind is not holding on anything with name and the form. The name and the form are seen, they appear to exist, but the fact is that they do not. That understanding only drops and dissolves the mind with all kinds of craziness.
my mind must validate the knowledge passed on to us by the master in the mind. So when the mind validates what is false is a false, the real self appears. It is already there. <clears throat> the water is already there. Now I see the water only in the waves. I see the clay in the clay pot. That is the way the mindfulness works. What is false negated to be in mindfulness all the time? <clears throat> Shanti 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 Lift your Buddha palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Don't go, we will share our experiences. To progress, it helps us, it gives us a new perspective when everyone shares their experiences. But I have already told you, bring the hands down, that you should be regular in continuing the journey. So, how are you, Stephen? Uh, uh, good. good. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Um, Garisha, I, I, I always, always enjoy how simple, simple you make these principles. principles. Um, the, the, the start, start of, 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 of listening, listening to this, this um, it, 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 was, it, was it was just so, so clear that, that none, none of this could work, work without, without the knowledge. knowledge. And, 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 you know, you know I, 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 for, for myself, myself I'm, I'm always, always measuring, measuring things, things against, against desire, ego, 
contemplating and reflecting. And if you do all of that with the wrong knowledge, none of this works. So it's really that simple. It's really simple. You know, and, 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 and I'm speaking from, from myself. I, I don't know how other people, people think about, about, about this, but, but, but to me, it, it just, it was, it was again another one of those aha moments for myself to say, okay, okay wow, I, I, I'm, I'm getting, getting this, and I'll, I'll just continue, continue the path and do, and do what needs to be done, and the experience during your words through the closing out when we close our eyes just fell into that space of, you know, you know re- going, going back, back to the reference, reference of what we've done, done during the week of uh, uh, lane, lane, lane one, two, three, I, I basically hovered over that, that uh, hash marks between, between lane two and three. three. Oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. Yes, it's very important what the Stephen is saying, that knowledge and understanding is very important. The entire journey of the Eastern wisdom we repeat it millions of times, even here in every country. Asatoma, Satagamaya. But we don't go deeper into it. Everyone knows that moving from the falsehood, false to the true, moving from the ignorance to the wisdom. But we don't pay attention. Oh, I have already spoken, I have already chanted with the incense sticks. No, that will not work. It should go inside. How are you, David and Jerry? Uh, uh, thank, thank you, sir. sir. Yeah. Uh, 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 those are the words, words I could only come, come up with is, is uh, simple. simple. Your, your simple, simple analogies, analogies, your simple, simple description, description, your simple, simple words. words my, I just, I just uh, uh, I let, let go. go. I, I can't, can't remember, remember any specifics, specifics other than, than just, just this vast, vast Nothingness. Vast nothingness. nothingness. Beautiful. That's a wonderful experience. How are you, Jerry? So good, thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree. agree. It hit me during, during the lesson, lesson as well. well just, just, um, I love, I love the, the humor. humor um, and, and the, the humor, humor comes, comes back, back to almost, almost the sarcastic. sarcastic. It's, it's so simple. simple. It's so like, simple. But we, what but we, but we make, make it, it so difficult, difficult sometimes. sometimes. And, and then, then just, just when, when the mind, mind is attaching to everything that's changing, changing we, we just, I guess, guess that's, that's what we have, have to know, know is what's, what's changing. changing. And, and then, then we, we also have to ask, ask the mind what's, what's not changing. changing. Do you, do you see, see what's, what's not changing? changing? And, and do, do you see where, where that, that is? is? That's, that's in everybody and everything everywhere. So, and then if we remind our mind that, then we're doing really well. That's how I translated into a simple question. You know, I'm angry over you. You know, normally we use the word. But did, do I ever think, did you give me the permission to be angry? And then it dissolves. No, you, you never say that. But why I'm doing it? Because of likes and dislikes. That is what you explained. Once that clarity is there, that clarity is awareness, that clarity is discernment. Wonderful. How are you, Brandy? Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm fine. fine. Um, um, that that my, meditation my meditation was really peaceful and relaxed, relaxed once, once I realized, realized that, that, you know, you know I, didn't I didn't have, have to hang on to the attention, attention that the mind was creating, you know, yeah, to, to your, your point. point. And, 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 and then I didn't want to come out of it. it so. So. Oh, so it's yeah. good, good Saturday, Saturday night practice. practice. <laughs> so you had a lot of thoughts be- before starting the session. <laughs> That's good. It cleared. Wonderful. So how are you, Terry? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't sleep, sleep last night. Last night. So Who did I not did sleep last, last night? night? I, I, I did, did the practice. Okay. Because, because I, I, I I was awake and I, I it, it helped. helped. So, so today, today I'm uh, just, just a, like, like a blank. 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 That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I heard, heard all your words. words. But, but I'm, I'm not, not intellectually, intellectually yeah. super, super sharp, sharp. <laughs> today. 
No, no, it's okay. But every time, if the body so-called causes any problem, ask the mind, did the body really create the problem and I should get upset? No, no I, I didn't, didn't get, get upset. upset. I, I had, had uh, lower level, so-called, the lower level of awareness because you did not sleep last night. But think yeah. of it today, who did not sleep last night? My <laughs> was did not. <laughs> so that, that, <laughs> you have to live into the knowledge all the time. It is yeah. not a practice. That is the goal. Uh -huh. <laughs> How are you, Vaibhu? Thank you, sir. Uh, um, it's, uh, uh, it's like uh, keeping the knowledge with me, how I'm able to unlock myself from the impressions that I'm having. So it was very calm, it was very peaceful. It's beautiful. Yeah, keeping that knowledge all the time results into peace and the calmness. I don't see people's videos, all of them. Maybe there might be. Relaxing. In the meantime, let me uh, go to Samir. Sir, it was... Uh, <clears throat> means, I was... Sometimes, sir, in the... Uh, means, all, all the days, whenever in the daytime, day sometimes, sometimes we are deep in meditation, meditation and, 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 and sometimes, sometimes we... we Totally, totally forget, forget this, this knowledge, knowledge and, and sometimes, sometimes it again. You mean this, this kind, kind of things, things happen, happen, keep on happening all, all the time. time. Means sometimes, sometimes we are deep into this, this and, and after that, that we are busy. busy. We, we totally forget, forget that, that uh, knowledge and these principles. And, these principles. Principles. and, then, and then, then again we have to recall them all the time. time. And then again we forget them again. So it is means little bit going up and down. Recalling is a big struggle, isn't it? The recalling means you have to remember this, this what, what you told, told me that, that you have to remember. Yeah. Again, that this, 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 this. So remember is a struggle. No, no not, not a struggle. struggle. <laughs> but but it's, yeah, we, we have, have to, to do, do it. it. Means, means keep, keep on. on uh, mind sometimes is in the work and, and is in the all other activities and. And, and then, then we, we have, have to take, take the mind and bring it back, back to the, uh, this. Part of the part of the baby monkey has to follow. That is very important when we follow the... We are holding on to... But why I am holding on to the knowledge? Because it takes me away from the suffering. It brings an end to the suffering. Because my mind does not see it with the clarity, that is why it forgets. You now, if I say, we will take up this. How are you, Sam? Good. Um, I, would I would say, say today, today I felt, felt safe in the meditation. meditation. And, and I, I realized, realized that, that our mind creates senses, senses of safety and unsafety. And unsafety. Falsely. Falsely. Yeah. That and is what Samir is, is talking about. Yes. There's, uh, uh, you know, you when know, my mind goes, goes, goes crazy, crazy and thinks, thinks about, about things, things and creates scenarios, it creates a sense, a sense of not safety, safety when, when there actually, actually is no is danger. danger. Yes, yes. That's a better explanation. That is why I asked you the question. Did our mind say there is a problem. Did mind send me the masses? That is very important because that reverses the forgetfulness. And once you remember, you are aware and you are free. Wonderful. How are you, Ashok? You are gone. No, how are you, Anastasia? Thank, Thank you. you. It was a very deep meditation. I was contemplating. I had a lot of images today. My mind is very excited about knowledge and principles. 
so and uh, it was interesting to look at the Bible experience because at the beginning I had the right body. I even didn't feel uh, I seen a little part of my body in my hands. And then I felt coldness. My hands uh, was extremely cold, and with this coldness, the heaviness uh, uh, came to the body. Uh, so it's interesting how the same hands can be called differently. Uh, it's just, I understand, I understand that, that it's just, just my mind uh, experience state of my mind. mind. It's a beautiful to to to. I'm repeating it. That it's a, it's interesting to see the experience of the hand changes even without doing anything. So what is working inside? It is the knowledge. It is my right perception to the world, to the body, to the things outside. That is why the Buddha said, right perception is meditation. That is one definition by the Buddha. How are you, Ashok? You are feeling too cold? Good. Sir, namaste. namaste, sir. Hello. Oh, they're traveling. Oh, that's very good. You are doing practices. <laughs> Uh, it's good. It's good. I uh, we don't hear you, but it's good. So, are Balraji have? No, Balraji. Yes, Kate. Good morning. Thank, Thank you for all your, your comments, comments everyone. everyone. Um, water, water and play awareness. awareness. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. Yes, but that awareness does not come so easily. Unless we understand the entire journey. So, who is left? Pushkar, I think. Balraj, you know. Raji, kuch bolenge. So think of this same question first that did anyone send me the messages to be angry, hesitated, reaction to them? They never send me the message. But why I feel those messages? Then you have to understand that very nature of the false. How we have to understand by nature of the false? By keenly observing, by analyzing. And the more we analyze, we step into the higher awareness. That is all for today.